Good afternoon, I'm Dr. McFadden at Valley Animal Hospital in Merced, California. And we are here today to discuss wing trims on parrots and those in the parrot family. We have a blue and gold macaw, Forbes, here today. And Forbes will be 30 years old next April. He's been around a long time and he's here to show you his gorgeous feathers. He is fully flighted, and what we want you to look at and notice today is that when we look at the very long flight feathers, the remiges, R-E-M-I-G-E-S, you can start at the outermost one, and there will be ten of them, and you will see that the curve of the feather changes as you get into the second layer. You never need to cut back more than 10 remiges on a bird. You will always cut evenly the same number of feathers on both sides. You'll hear rumors that to cut one side will make them fly lopsided. That is incorrect. Their longest, strongest flight feathers are the first feathers. So I assure you, they can still fly when only a few are taken on one side. The larger the bird, the fewer feathers you need to trim. It is the small, light, more athletic birds that may need to have eight or ten taken. A bird such as a macaw will usually do fine with six being removed. The object of a wing trim is to prevent your bird from flying away where they could be endangered even killed. It also helps within the house to keep them from flying into ceiling fans, open toilets, uh, boiling pots of water on the stove. These birds are part of the family companion pets and it's your job to make sure that they are healthy and kept safe. Huh? Yeah. So we're going to do our demonstration of a wing trim on a little budger agar and we will meet him next. We are back with our little American budger agar, also called a parakeet. This is Toby. Turn around, Toby. Say hi. And Kelly will be assisting us today in this wing trim. So Toby is wrapped in a towel and that's for his own benefit. In holding him, I have brought a finger and thumb together and that is so I'm not putting too much pressure on the bird's chest. A bird does not have a diaphragm and they must be able to expand their chest to breathe. The towel keeps your own sweaty hands and I do mean that because the oils on a person's hand will rub off on the feathers can actually discolor them black over time if it is done too frequently. Lotions and things that many people apply will also rub off on the bird's feathers and that can affect their health of the feathers and their ability to keep warm naturally. So, little Toby isn't too happy being a little birdie burrito here, but he's safe and that's the point. By rotating very slightly, I can bring his wing out and extend that completely. The second thing to note is where are his feet? You are never successful in doing a wing trim if you have cut off the bird's leg. Pay attention to detail. So he is safe, he is chewing, he is happy. And you will note once again that we have his feathers completely exposed. And if you recall, we counted about the first ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. These are pointed more forward, the other are pointed more backwards. There is a natural change in the shape of the feather. I'm going to turn him over to Kelly. Kelly has him in position. One thing to remember when you are doing a wing trim is that feathers do not grow continuously. They grow a new feather and they will molt it and it will fall out. That changes generally about twice a year for a bird which means that if you give them a bad haircut they will have it for six months but then all will be well again. 
That said, there's no reason not to do a pretty job of your trim. So you take that first feather, and I'm just using a pair of scissors, and I cut up under the next row. We can turn them out this way. You want to be careful. I'm trying to leave his wing in a natural position. So I tend to go from the outside. It's three, four, five. But look at this. By cutting up under that row, instead of one of those dreadful scissor chops that you'll see at some uh, stores, we have a beautiful natural feather to look at. From the inside, you can see where they've been trimmed. And we're going to go ahead and trim a little more. Because we know Toby can fly. All right. Very pretty. And we're done. We're going to take a look now at the other side. We just gently roll him in the towel. Kelly is holding his feet. Very simple thing to do. Certainly I would encourage you to have a helper when you're doing this. So as she gets him ready, she's going to bring his little feet together. And again, we just gently pull this wing. And we want the wing to curve with his body. We aren't trying to pull it back over his head where the poor guy is about to break his arm. Sometimes a bird may have a brand new feather growing in. It's called a blood feather. Let me stop for a moment and try and come down to that. When you come close and look, the ends of these feathers are all clear all the way as it comes into his skin. That is a fully adult feather. But a pin feather or brand new baby feather coming in will be either pink or blue colored from the blood in it. It will look fatter, probably twice as fat. If you cut into that, that bird will bleed and it will continue to bleed until you actually pull the base of the feather out. Once you have pulled that base out, you may have to use a dry cotton ball to put pressure, but the blood should stop very quickly at that point. No styptic powder, nothing else will help. You must pull the base of a blood feather that you have cut. I don't have any to demonstrate on this little guy. So again, we're going to come in. We're going to allow that scissor to slide up under the next row. I have my finger under here, so I also know that I'm protecting him from cutting into any other area. Alright, let's see if little Toby will perch here for us. Come on Toby, up, up. So Toby may not want to perch, but he will not be flying. Thank you very much. Okay, bonus section. We're also going to trim his nails. In a budgie I am going to use a human nail trimmer and my goal here is simply to blunt the edges or points. Should I inadvertently get into the quick and have any blood, then I have styptic powder handy to press on there and stop it immediately. Unless bird nails are extremely overgrown, that's rarely a problem but I always encourage everyone to have styptic powder on hand at home for unexpected emergencies. You can see Toby's a pretty good-natured little guy. He gets to ride around all day with his mom at home and gets little treats of cantaloupe and other yummy delicious things. We're good, thank you.